the computer. Hey, everyone. It's Geek Mom Karen, and I am here with Madeline, and she is going to tell us all about her exciting Kickstarter project. So, Madeline, give us a little bit of an overview. Uh, well, first, thank you so much for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. Uh, for those of you out in the world who don't know me or my um, steampunk supernatural series, Boston Metaphysical Society, uh, the original premise is about an ex Pinkerton detective, a spirit photographer, and a genius scientist who battles supernatural forces in late 1800s Boston. We started off as a graphic novel, a six issue miniseries, and have since um, produced four sequels to that. And uh, then we decided to do an audio drama. So uh, we currently have on Kickstarter Boston Metaphysical Society, The Ghost Ship. And uh, it is set during the time period of our original six issue miniseries. So the main characters are uh, Samuel, Caitlin, and Granville. And um, they have to investigate a, a ghost ship that has sailed into Boston Harbor and is killing everyone on board. And they have to figure out why in order to stop it. So uh, this is an eight episode audio drama full cast, special effects, original music. So it's like your old time radio drama. That is and, super cool. And it was really, it was a lot, it, it's a lot of, it's a lot of work to do. I'm officially the producer. I am officially a producer now. <laughs> and no, that is not glamorous whatsoever. <laughs> um, uh, I have a production team of Eddie Louise and Chip Michael who not only, well, they co-created and acted in and produced the audio drama Sage and Savant, which was a, a sci-fi steampunk um, uh, drama on, on for four years. So they knew way more about this process than I did. And in fact, I blame Eddie Louise for doing this. This was all her idea. Uh, we were at, uh, this is all pre-pandemic. -pre we were at the Nebula conference together, hanging out. And she's like sat me down and said, you have to, you have to turn this into an audio drama. This would just be perfect for an audio drama. And so I will, okay, I'll do that, but you have to help. <laughs> so I hired her and her husband, Chip, and the process began. Uh, we, I sent out a casting notice and got fabulous talent. I mean, what I, well, I went through a lot of auditions. <laughs> a lot and it was very very hard to choose what I would call I, I narrowed everything down to our final three and then sent that over to Eddie Louise and we would talk you know she'd review it and we would talk about it um just because one of the most important things with an audio drama you have to make sure the voices don't sound alike so whoever is listening oh, I can, didn't know that. can really distinctively know who's speaking and particularly in, uh, well, for, for any gender, but the ghost ship, just because it turned out that way is, is male heavy. So there's a lot of male voices. So I have to make sure none of those voices sound the same. And um, I do promise that if we do do a second season that it will be more female. I'll, I'm gonna go the other side. <laughs> um, but yeah, it just happened to go that way for this particular story. Um, and it was tough. It was tough to, when we got our final three. What was the biggest transition going from a graphic novel to an audio? Uh, one, putting in different types of sound effects. I mean, yes, obviously you put in sound effects into graphic novels, but they're, they're very sparse and, and they're visual. And this is all auditory. So you have to think about, you know, the, the Boston Metaphysical Office is on the wharf in Boston Harbor. So you have to think about wharf sounds, seagulls, the ocean, you know, out splashing against the wharf, people walking on uh, the wharf itself, the wood, and then transitioning from wood to cement or to, you know, hardwood. And are they in a enclosed space or are they in a big space? is that space, do they have brick walls? 
or do they have wood? Because the sound is different. Oh, when you know wow. the interior space of the sound is is different between if you're in a brick room with say no carpeting or very little furniture as opposed to uh, a room that has wood paneling and carpeting and lots of furniture there's it's a more muffled sound so there was that and also directing the um the actors um obviously i'm not in a comic script i'm Right. There's no directors to act to to no actors to direct rather, um, but what's similar between the two documents? They're they're I call them both communication documents. Mm -hmm. A uh, a script for a graphic novel is a communication document for your team. It's for your artist, your colorist, your letterer, and possibly your pre press person. Um, with an audio drama, it's a communication document to your actors, to your audio engineer, um, to your director. And so, but the directions on it are a little different. And um, it's it just, it's it's really, it is, it is very interesting. And I had to get my brain kind of in a different frame of mind when writing the, the audio scripts. Do you tend to be more of a visual person or more of a an audio person in your own like learning? Um, I'm I'm visual, uh, and particularly well. I'm a trained screenwriter. I have an MFA in screenwriting from UCLA, so my background is in visual writing, which made the transition to uh, graphic novel writing, um, I think, a little easier. I mean, they're not the same. But there's a lot of similarities that you can you can bring with you when you're writing a comic script, and um, so that part was going from screenwriting to comic book writing wasn't that far off. But going from that to strictly audio is really different, right? Because, because I oh, go ahead, sorry. Oh no, it's okay because you're you're always thinking. You 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 default to visual thinking, mm -hmm. and you have to translate the visual thinking into auditory. That's fascinating because I've I've read some scripts, some some graphic novel scripts as like you know addendums at the ends of things, mm -hmm. and they'll say so and so walks across here, or this is what it looks like in the background. So instead of telling the artist how you envision the scene. You really don't envision an audio scene so much as you um, in here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's yeah, it's 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 kind of like that. And and my audio engineer and I, I mean, he's he's let's just say he's educated me. Both Chip and Eddie Louise have educated me quite a bit. You know, and mentored me uh, through this whole process. Um, thankfully and made it all much, much better. <laughs> what does it sound, I guess then my question is because I'm nosy and this is, these are the questions I care about. Uh -huh. um, so instead of saying like, so-and-so walks across or stands in front of X, what kind of direction do you have to give in an audio script that translates what you want people to understand and, 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 the, and turn a sound into a visual? Because really that's, what I guess you're doing. Yes. Um, you, I, it would be a line of dialogue and then you would have a line of uh, women's boots walking across cement or wood because the line that, let's say like Caitlin would say, would imply or, and or be doing an action that would require her to walk across whatever it was. And, and there's, you know, obviously a different sound between women walking and men walking. Right, right. And, and then, you know, all the kind of the other, other background stuff you have to think about, like you'll have Granville's um, workshop that's kind of in the background. And sometimes the door to the workshop, it'll be open, some it'll be closed. But, you know, when it's open, faint in the background you might hear like this electrical buzzing and then when it's closed and there's a dark room where 
Caitlin um, develops her photos and, you know, the sound of being inside or outside, like if Samuel is like yelling at her from the outside, you have this muffled of like, you know, is it safe to come in? So you have the muffled, his sound, and then the, you sound, and then you have a line of door opens and men's shoes walking in, or you could say Samuel walking in, doesn't matter, right, just right. as long as you communicate that. Because then the audio engineer is going like, oh, it's obviously Samuel Minshew's. I know who this character is. And, you know, continuation with the dialogue and whatever back, if there's any background noise, you know, going on. That's a totally different way of thinking. I'm not yeah. sure I could do that. I'm not an auditory person at all. So I give you a lot of credit because I can't, I mean, I can't visual things either. So, you know, there's that. But um, that's super cool. So we were talking a little earlier. You're this is a Kickstarter. Yes. Tell us a little bit about the length of the Kickstarter, um, et cetera. Sure. Uh, we launched on October 20th. Uh, as of today, which is the 25th, we are 75% funded. Woo! Um, Congratulations! With a, um, with a $10,000 goal. And, you know, which is great. It's really solid. We're moving ahead. Um, it's a really very different kind of Kickstarter for me because I've done gra only graphic novels up until this point. Um, you know, it's under a different category. It's under um, a different business name um, just because I had to incorporate to do this project. So it's under Queen of Mercia LLC, which is me. And even says so, <laughs> you, know, it's, you know, you know, they have a little square of like, you know, the creator. And then it says right there, it's, it's basically me. <laughs> Hey, it's Madeline from Boston Metaphysical. This is my company. That's that's essentially what it says. Um, and yeah, we go into Friday, November nineteenth, and we do have some really cool rewards. We obviously have basic downloads. Um, you can get just like a little taste for you know, like five dollars. You get the first episode. You can get half of them for 15, but if you want all eight episodes, an MP3 download, it's $22. Um, there is a really cool flash drive that uh, you can get. It's, if you go to the site, it's, it's wooden and it's, and it's oval. It almost looks like something that would belong on a ship, which is why I chose oh, that's it. Super cool. And um, I asked a friend of mine, artist uh, Alejandro Lee, to uh, draw an American clipper ship because that's what the ghost ship is. It's, it's an American clipper ship. And so what's gonna be um, uh, printed on the flash drive is, you know, this clipper ship and then the other side, the, the ghost ship. And then we've got uh, a five disc CD set. Um, and then for those who are completely new to the series, there's of course the option to get digital or physical ver versions of the graphic novels. I have the physical versions, but I haven't had a chance to read them yet because I only got them two weeks ago. <laughs> but I'm excited about them. The, the concept is super cool. And um, so one of the things we were talking about a little bit before the interview <clears throat> mm -hmm. was about running a Kickstarter and understanding some of the ins and outs. Yeah. Do you have any, I like how you said yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you've now said that this is a different sort of entirely different Kickstarter approach for you. So what's the yeah. difference between a graphic novel Kickstarter other than incorporating yeah. and, uh, you know, the audio story, the audio book? The main difference is that the main reward tiers are digital as opposed to physical. And yeah, it's the nature of the beast. It, right. it is what right. it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, most, I think most Kickstarter backers are accustomed to getting something in their hands, right? Uh, which is why I did do the flash drive and the CD, um, which, which start at, I think, like slightly higher uh, price points than usual, but that's also the nature of the beast, right? Um, you know, the cost of, of doing business. Um, and like I also mentioned, because it's in under a different category and a different account name, I can't take advantage of all of the 
easy communication I can do, say, if I launched another graphic novel. Uh, what Kickstarter has is you you can follow other creators. Right. And, and I'm sure you've seen that. Mm -hmm. And since, you know, this is Kickstarter number 10 for me. Uh, so all the previous ones have been for the graphic novel or one of the graphic novels. So, you know, I have like a whole, I don't know how many, like a ton of followers. So what happens is that when you launch, all those people are immediately notified that you've launched a new project. Oh. But since I have a new account, none of that exists. Interesting. So it, no, go ahead. Keep going. A little, it's, it, it is more difficult to get the word out you know, particularly right in the beginning. Right. So now for anyone who's considering something like this, <clears throat> if you had to start over again, knowing that you were planning to do two different types of media, mm -hmm. would there be anything you would do differently? Or would I you would still need to create an extra company and additional account? Yeah, I would probably do more communicate about the new company more okay. and i would prepare people mentally that this was coming and and even though obviously i did that in in the prior ones right. if i could have started it you know a couple kickstarters ago saying hey be sure to follow me over at queen of mercia too so when we you know move stuff over there you'll be notified immediately that that would probably be a, would have been a good idea but three Kickstarters ago, I didn't know I was going no, to do this. No, no. Now, just yeah. out of curiosity, one other question, because I'm a businesswoman too, and now I'm just kind of nosy. And so you're stuck <laughs> with it. Um, did you have to create an additional Kickstarter account because you're doing a different type of media? No, I had to because I was putting it under a different business name. Oh, okay. And it was yeah. under the different business name because of all of the different stuff you had to do for an audio... Yeah, because I hired all of the because actors. Because you hired everyone. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. I got it now. I, I'm slow on the uptake. It's like late on a Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. well, that's part okay. of the producer hat is that, um, you know, I handled all the contracts with the actors, you know, getting them out, getting them signed, getting them paid. Um, uh, same thing with my audio engineer and my script editor uh you know it's a tax thing and also a, a, a legal protection thing right right yep yep and uh and, and my lawyers strongly suggested i do that mm -hmm. doing an audio drama like this so i would have suggested the same thing and i'm a lawyer so yeah 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 so no it was it was a good thing to do it was the right thing to do it just makes uh communication harder no that or, totally makes sense i thought the yeah. i thought the new account was related to like being in a different vertical on kickstarter as opposed to other parts of the audio recording no i think oh it would have been a lot easier to communicate to um to the kickstarter community if i had launched this on the boston metaphysical account gotcha gotcha um and then i got the double whammy of one it's not under graphic novels it's in a completely different category. Okay, it was a double whammy. I got you now. Yeah. I was a little confused. It's yeah. Been a long day, as we discussed no. earlier. It's been a long couple of weeks. <laughs> no, I mean that's that's why I I feel we're doing we're doing very well. Um, yeah. Uh, for a lot of you know, obviously I'm working around that. <laughs> right. Right. No, that totally makes sense. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. No. I was just no, being nosy fine. and. And I'm fascinated by some of the business ins and outs of these, of Kickstarters and, and running projects and creator owned projects. Um, and you mentioned producer, and this is your first time as a producer. Mm -hmm. um, what were some of the challenges outside of clearly the legal? Because <laughs> <laughs> we attorneys are the worst um, challenges that you weren't expecting. Oh, uh, the time suck. Oh, fair Just, enough. Yeah the the amount of the amount of time um i mean like chip is doing an amazing he, he was also our director and he just was amazing but you know he already has the voice tracks laid for all eight episodes oh wow so we're in product we're in production so this will happen no matter what because it will i always finish what i start that's just who i am um and so yeah but 
you know, listening to, to take after take to see if it's appropriate, whether, you know, we need to ask for retakes from the actors, um, re-listening to that, to the new take. It's just, it's a, it's a lot of time involved. What is the one thing that you've enjoyed the most about putting together the audio recording that you can't get when you're doing the graphic novelization? Well, for me, it was learning how to write in a different medium. Because I mean, I'm a writer. I mean, that's so that that's my happy place. And so for me to learn how to write in a different medium is is like, okay, this is cool. You know, now I know how to do something else. Um, so yeah, because I love to learn new things and and that was great. But I have to tell you, I have heard snippets of completed scenes and they are just amazing you know with the full music and special effects like there is an excerpt on the kickstarter homepage, so for people to listen to, to you know just get a a sense of what everything is about and it's like whoa this sounds way better than i thought it ever would so yeah chip is doing an amazing job i'm gonna ask another question and then i'll we can start to wrap up i don't want to take too much of your time but I'm really nosy. What's it? I am. That's, that's why I love doing what I do over here at Geek Mom. So I'm also, I'm a musician. So what's it like trying to hire a composer and get, you know, original music written and, and what's that process like? She says, as she leans in. It leans in. <laughs> um, well, I was rather fortunate in with Chip is he's kind of everything. He's also the composer. Okay. So when, when I hired him, he was hired as everything, the audio engineer and the composer. And he is uh, a professional composer and audio engineer. Um, though like a lot of people, he does have another job because <laughs> um, because we know how these gigs work. Right. And What's it like working with someone and coming up with music? Like, how do you have sort of that meeting of the minds where you're like, this is exactly what I would have heard in my head if music played in my head. Well, he very wisely asked me to go in search of music that I thought fit Boston Metaphysical and send him clips. So I would send him links to a bunch of stuff of things that I felt embodied the series. And then he listened to that and then came up with different themes and things. And so we've gone through quite a number of themes and it'd be interesting because he'd send me like a, a two minute clip of something and it's like, oh, okay. I really like from point 45 seconds on. And, and then he'd take that and then he'd rework that. And, and so that, that's a process and he would send me different emphasis and and, and there would be like, you know, one or two times when I would say like, no, that's, that's not it. But that's information he wants to know. Cause then he can right. just like take it. He was like, okay, that's gone. You know, that's off the plate. We need to steer in this direction. It's and, really similar to regular, like verbal, right? Well, tech, word text writing in a lot of ways. It, it is, but it, it's different. It, it's different. <laughs> it is, but it's different. Yeah. I, yeah. It is, Fair but enough. it's different. It is, it's, but it's, it's I mean, you're still given notes, you know, it's, it's the same concept of giving notes, but it's notes on, you know, instead of like, okay, this line and this line, it's like, okay, from this point, you know, from 0.40 seconds to uh, one minute, 30 seconds, I like this section here. Um, so yeah, it's, it's the same, but different. <laughs> yep, totally get it, totally get it. So why don't we wrap up? I don't wanna take up too much of your time, but I've really appreciated this conversation. I thank you so much because it was fun for me. Thank you. Um, why don't you give us one more wrap up of you know the Kickstarter dates, remind everybody. Um, you can also sort of read out the link, I guess. I don't know, I've never done this part of, of a Kickstarter interview before or share a screen. I can let you share the screen so we can if I can figure out how. You can figure, can out, figure how. out how. There you um, go, you can share your screen if you wanna show off what it looks like. Uh, I Or not. 
If I, I didn't prepare you for that one. You I didn't, didn't think that far that. in advance. I didn't think that far in advance. That's a Karen thing, um, <laughs> not a Madeline thing. So tell us the dates again. Sure. Uh, go to kickstarter.com um, and you can look for Boston Metaphysical Society, the ghost ship audio drama. Uh, we are on for 23 more days, um, but we end on the morning of Friday, November 19th. Uh, we're looking for a $10,000 goal. Uh, we're 75% there as of today. Um, Monday. And it's not even a week. Today's Tuesday. Tuesday, right. Sorry. According yeah. to my Tuesday. watch, today is Tuesday. Yes. Tuesday, <laughs> October 26th. Yes. Uh, but yeah, we still we still have a teeny bit way to get there. So every pledge, no matter how much, is equally important and equally appreciated. <laughs> So, so yeah go ahead yeah so uh definitely go uh pledge today particularly if you love to listen to um if you're an audiobook person then you're an audio drama person and these are about 30 ish minutes long each episode uh, when when you finally get them so it's that perfect timing for your cardio at the gym so you can listen it. to you can listen to a whole episode while you do your cardio See, you planned it that way too. Right. Clearly. That's right. <laughs> well, thank you again. And thank you. Uh, this is Geek Mom signing out. And go check it out because it's going to be awesome.